Hey guys, let's talk about strong hands. Because people, people want stronger hands. Makes sense to me. Let's read the question. At any point in time, did you ever actually do any strength training for your hands? Um, so I don't have any with me. You guys may have seen those captains of crush gripper things. I'm going to be honest. I think those are a little stupid. I don't think they're very helpful. The position I have for people, if they ask about this stuff, I'll say, hey, the problem isn't really that people's hands aren't strong enough. It's that they need to deploy the strength they actually have, meaning like with this Glock, like hold on to it with my dominant hand so that it's not moving around. I don't use all my strength for that, right? I don't. I'm using some of my strength, not all of it. And then I connect to the frame and it's that I deploy the pressure in a specific way. It's not just eh, grab really hard. It's no, I'm grabbing onto the gun and clamping down into the frame. It's more that I'm, it's not that I have to be really strong to do this. I just deploy the pressure in a specific way. That's what I tell people. Okay. So being stronger, that's not really the point. That's not really going to help a whole lot. It may help some, but it doesn't help, help a ton. All right. I know Joel mentioned once, once in a class video to avoid the captains of crush grippers and focus on white knuckling the support hand as you dry fire the proper pressure and the muscles in your hands will get used to the effort and pressure being applied. Yeah, you're going to get stronger and more like your hands get trained in a specific way doing that stuff. Um, we've seen a lot of injuries from the captains of crush things. That's why we don't, we don't tell people to use those. I don't think they're really bad. I don't think it's bad to have stronger hands. But what I do know is I've seen tons of people get injured with the, the hand strength training. Um, all right. I'm a small guy, five foot four. That is small. Short Kings, shout out. Shout out to the Short Kings. And got small hands. And I'm still struggling with maintaining connection. What feels like I'm not applying enough pressure. Wondering if I actually need to do strength training or keep riding it out in dry fire. You know, you could try pull-ups. You could try the strength training things. One thing I would think about if I was you is shoot, oh, here, borrow one of these. There's something like this from somebody. Borrow like an open gun, a comped open gun, and shoot that and see what you think about your hand pressure on that because it's going to change things up. If you feel like you can't control this, like if this doesn't feel a lot easier, genuinely, maybe you are doing something wrong. So that would be something to think about as well. All right, he added it to add, I know my hands should be tired and sore after dry firing, but should my support hand fingertips be numb as well? I'm wondering if that's supposed to be happening. No, dude, that, like, what the fuck, man? No, that sounds weird. That doesn't sound right. Like, I, it's, it's strange you have to ask this. All right, I just joined training group and watched once a video uh, series on recoil control. I think it answered a lot of my questions. Yes, joining training group. Yes, that will do that. Okay. Um... Yeah, guys, I don't think the hand thing, it's it's not that you need stronger hands. It's like what people what people don't get, or like typically, if I'm working with somebody, they're just too much with their firing hand. They do too much pressure, right? And they don't stay connected to the gun with the support hand. Again, beyond that, getting stronger hands, it just doesn't help that much. It helps a little bit, but it does it doesn't like fix everything for you. Um, going out there, doing specific training, playing around with these variables, that's going to kind of show you the right way. And then you can replicate that in your training. Jeez.